Hello everybody and welcome to, yes, this is the final episode of Operation Moonsucker. No, I probably can't get my voice any deeper. Alright, what we're doing here is delivering one of the final tanks to the hauler, my big ass freighter that is going to deliver fuel to my refueling station in lower carbon orbit, the Franz. And once we have those tanks on board of the hauler, the hauler will get them to the space station so we can actually have, finally, after seven episodes, we can have a fuel delivery to that station. Isn't that neat? And you can see here as the tank is being docked onto the freighter. Actually it could carry three times more of that, so I could carry a, a 12 tanks uh, easily towards uh, the space station. But in the interest of time, and of course your time, dear viewer, we are going to skip ahead and use only three tanks. Once again, I'm using my tried and true get the ascending node above the base and then descend method of descending. And you can see here that the base is working over time. Why do I know that? Because the radiators are glowing really hot today. Okay, we are now touched down on the surface. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it is time to actually fly this thing. Yes, we are going to move a big ship, a very big ship, the hauler ship. The mother of all ships, basically. Alright, so first we have to get one of the tugs, my squid tug as I affectionately call them. We have to get that back onto the spine so it doesn't drift away from the space station. You can see a lot of other tanks here waiting in orbit. Those are all empty, so if I wanted to get all of those refueled, I would spend quite a few days just ferrying tanks between the surface and orbit. All right, but now it is time. It is time to get this thing moving. And our pilot Duning Kerman, or Dunning Kerman, what do you think? Let me know in the comments how I should pronounce him. He is now setting a course for lower Earth, uh, did I say Earth? Of course I meant Kerbin. For lower Kerbin orbit and of course the Franz, my refueling station. And now we set our maneuver node, it is time to fire those massive nuclear engine clusters, which I have come to call the candle drive. And this is going to happen right about, yes, now. There we go, fuel is on the way, dear Franz. Okay, Delta V is dropping down. And yeah, this is... This has been quite an interesting experiment for me, to be honest, because I have never actually built a refueling base on the moon. I only did that, or should I call it Mun or Moon? What do you think? Uh, anyways, I only did that before on Minmus because Minmus is of course a lot easier to land on, you barely need any Delta V. So it was not as complicated as this one, so everything had to be bigger, everything had to be more powerful, but it worked out, so yeah, it's feasible to get a refueling uh, station down there on the moon and get things running, so NASA, take note, do you need an engineer for building your base? Don't choose me, because I will over-engineer the heck out of it. Alright, we are now doing our braking maneuver, sort of. We are lowering our apps. Since this ship is so massive, even with uh, that many engines, it takes a lot of time to get the apps down. So I'm going to do two passes in order to get into an orbit around Kerbin, where I can actually do a feasible rendezvous with the space station. But first let's do an inclination change, which is also uh, very practical so I can get an easier rendezvous. So the best way to dock two objects in space, first of all they have to find each other. And how do they find each other? Well, easiest thing is if at least they don't have to look for themselves in the third dimension. So 
If you get the planes aligned, then you only have to worry about the X and Y dimension of those things. Anyhow, we are now seeing here the indicator of the first rendezvous. And it looks okay, we're going to be 300 meters apart, which is quite manageable. And in order to at least get there, before we can get there, we first have to do another maneuver burn and lower our Apple apps even further. Yes, this is me performing that burn. You can see here how the Apple apps is being lowered and we have, yes, we have our encounter. And after another pass, we should meet that space station if our math has been correct. Well, not our math, the game's math, of course. And of course, the math of all the physicists and astrophysicists and mathematicians that came before the game, of course. All right, there it is. Hello, Franz. Good to see you again. And yeah, this has been... <laughs> Well, what you are seeing here is basically sped up four times in post-processing because those are about 1200, 1500 parts that you can see here on your screen. So it was really sluggish to work with. In the end, I thought, well, maybe I could even get a dock with that big ship on the space station. First I thought, well, I wanted to to use that little that little uh, grab thing that I delivered in one of the first episodes. I actually delivered just one, uh, one small tug to the space station so I can get the tank, dock it uh, to the station and refill the station because I was not sure if uh, the freighter would be able to dock. But I decided to, well, let's try it out. Maybe I don't need to tug at all. So we're using our main docking port. And yes, I realized that I could have used the docking ports on the outside of the fuel tanks much easier. But yeah, in the heat of the moment, I kind of forgot about those. I only realized that afterwards. Okay, this has been a bit of a tricky maneuver, to be honest. I already retracted solar panels so they would not get destroyed by me moving around and probably scratching a lot of paint on the fronts. So if any Kerbals live on there, they probably got real panicked right about now. Okay, I had to switch the docking port because I was pretty sure that how those were aligned, I would not hit the one I selected uh, beforehand. So this looked actually promising. I thought, oh, maybe I could skip the entire tug and transport and dock thing and just dock the entire freighter and transfer the fuel. Uh, yeah, but there were a few millimeters missing. Hmm, not nice, Franz. I'm disappointed. But then after shifting around the spaceship, finally something happened. And what is it? Yes. We got a dock of all things! Now it was possible to refuel the France. So, in reference to my really first video about all of this, France gets fuel! Okay, you can see here that little tug that I wanted to use but never got around to using it, but well, who cares? So, that's it for Operation Moonsucker 2. Thanks for watching. Good.
France will be back good as new. But yeah, this actually is it for Operation Moonsucker. Thank you for sticking around. If you liked what you've seen, please consider subscribing, unless you already have. Also, why don't you follow me on one of those social thingies where you can see the icons around here. And if you really want to stay in the loop, please click on the notification bell so you don't miss any new videos. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.